Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lili Nishmasi Mimiros, Sirus Bas Mordechai. Rabbi Sai, here we are. Uh, we're flying tomorrow, in just a few hours. We're recording here live. I really appreciate everybody that came. It's a uh, schos to know you guys, to have you here. It gives me a lot of chizik, actually. So, thank you. There are only nine days left to Ksuvas. Nine days. And 331 new people signed up, which is Givaldic, but we could do better. Almost every Mesech that we had, we had over a thousand people sign up. Ksubis, which is one of the most fun, Gishmaka, amazing Mesechtas, we got to get a lot more than that. So it's up to you guys. They don't just come on their own. People have to go out there, reach out to their friends and get them. Uh, it's still the same day as this morning. I mean, you might be seeing this year, it's already the next day, but 885 tickets sold. So I, I was thinking about it on the way here. It's a Kiddush Hashem. We have close to 900 people that acted like mention. They know how hard it is to organize these events and to do it before. And I'm not, that, I'm not one of those guys. I'm last minute kind of guy, unfortunately. So it's a schos to know 900 people that before, weeks before the event, they go and they're nice to the organizers because they really need to know how much food and what to do. And they're about to close this thing out. So, shukayach to everybody. And here, Rabbi Sai, check this out. This is one of my favorites. I think that's Mark Ashkenazi, if I'm not mistaken. He's, he's, he, let's see it again. Hold on. This is a good one because good aim. Check this out. <laughs> the left, left top corner, I think, is Mark, if I'm not mistaken. Here is Daniel Turk that we spoke about this morning. Here he is at his chasana, literally at the chasana, learning the daf, not posed. And here, a boy say, oh. We have a schmack of good mornings today. Here we go. Good morning, Abba Shai! Hey! <laughs> if anybody had to guess who that is, that's Shimi oh, okay. Leafman's... Life. Life and Leafman's <laughs> worker, obviously. Uh, just the personality says it all. And here, unbelievable one also. And spotted in Lakewood. Dear Rebelli, looking forward to the scene and deal. I was with MDY since the Sephardim Megillah, and I have to say it changed my life. That's Lacha Rabba, Moshe Mizrahi, spotted in Lakewood, MDY car. Dov Friedman, my grandfather's told me that story multiple times. He's referring, remember I said that Marshall, that there was a blind man, they gave him a shidduch, a woman that he typically wouldn't be married to if he wasn't blind, and then there was a woman that, that said all sorts of things, but she was deaf, and I said, I don't know what the nimshal, I remember the, the mashal, I don't remember the nimshal, so he says, beautiful, and this is what it, this is, what it is. It started so off that our neshamas didn't want to come down to this world, so why are we punished for what we do? Then the story of the miracle where we're curing the two women, the answer to the question is, you're right, you don't want to come down, but you also don't want to leave this world. Now that you're here, and you say, okay, let me shecht you. No, 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 you, know, you run for your life, so you do want to be here. Okay, so you do want to be here. So take care of business. Looking forward to joining this year live in a few weeks. The Pyrenees HaChodesh for the Koylos, Le'ili Nishma Zechari Ben Moisha. Our own frame in the Schuss continuing panels is Yadish Shemayin, that's not the rebellion. By the Lach and Ludwig family is Lakewood, New Jersey because Torah is the best Segula. For Shlema, I don't know if I said this, he wrote another email where he said that every time he gave MDY, he made that much more money, so that's why he encourages people to give and give. Before Shleima, Chana Yechever Avio Bashi Berchaya, then the white family, Lunishmas, Shimshin Weiss, Shimshin Ben Meshulam Dov, Zuchan Lubracha. Paras of number five has a schus for our children to be Kaddish, safe, healthy, and happy, and now, and know Hashem loves them. Before Shleima, for Rabbi Shrol, Moisha, Ben Esther, before Shleima. I should be Zoycha to Nachas the Gedush and tremendous success in my business. Amen. Okay. So here we are, Daf Kuf Yudalid, Kid. Not kidding, Kid Omid Beis. We're holding by the Gemara. Just started the Mishnah, discussing a woman 
who went on vacation with her husband and she comes back and she has news. Do we trust her or not? She says her husband is dead. So says the Gemara, Tana. The Gemara is basically inferring that this, that your typical classic contradiction between the Rish and the Seifa. It says, if there's peace and there's nothing going on in the world, but what if it's just Parav and from the Seifa it seems like Fakir? Okay, but the point is, Tana, Shalom Beinoi Levena, Mishum the Kaboy, Lemisna Ktata Beinoi Levena. No, we just. We want to have a symmetrical Mishnah, so we start off that there's peace, but really the point is whether or not there's a big fight between the two of them that we can't trust her. We really want to talk about the war, we want to talk about a war between the couple, a war in the world. That's, that's what interests us. Omar Rav, my time at the Mulchama, what is the problem if there's a war? So the Gemara gives us a Yisoyed, and that's the Yisoyed that we're going to be discussing a lot. Mishum da Amra Bididami. People assume things. When it comes to these kind of things, you're in a war and there's a gun battle and the woman sees an arrow go right through her husband's neck. She turns around, what, what, what's, what's her initial, what does she do? She turns around and she runs. She runs for her life. She's next. She can't imagine that her husband survived an arrow like that. Gunshot wound to the head. Which reminds me, somebody just sent me a clip, no shaykhs, and I wasn't even planning on saying it. But uh, some guy was getting mugged, and he decided to jump on the guy with the gun. He grabbed his gun, but the guy was much stronger than him. And it's all caught on video. He shoots him three times, one in the head, one in the this. And then it says in the bottom, the guy survived. So if you're the wife and you see this, you see your husband shot in the face, shot in the, the stomach. Shot. So she, she comes to bed, the guy's dead. She didn't hear from him. A few months go by, he's, he's, he's definitely dead. So, Mishun the Amr with the dummy. You can't pass in Allah as an Ishish based on an assumption. So, Gadaita, Bukhal Hani, the Iktu Lupalid, what? The whole battalion, the whole, everybody got wiped out. Uh, my husband survived. We had that mice with Ramosha Feinstein. When he got up and he yelled at the woman and he said, tell me the story again, tell me the story again. She was so sure that her husband died in Auschwitz. He didn't. There are people that survived. They're doing well. The Shalom Bayes is great. She's not going to say anything until she actually saw the Yitzhiz Neshama. Sometimes they hit him with an arrow or berumcha. A, uh, how do you say, a spear. He, she's, she's not a doctor. What does she know? She, she saw this. This is how it goes. She's, she's sure he died. The Ovad Samtari Vechoyo. The Gemara Babashi uses this lotion in the Fayyidalad on the base. The Gemara says that it's a special grass or some sort of asev. You put it on any wound, even a shechita. The Gemara where was it in uh, Bamatia says? They shecht the person, you put this thing, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a miracle uh, grass. You put it on, pff, the guy is healed. So maybe they, somebody had it, he whipped it out of his uh, medical pack, put it on. Meanwhile, she's running away. Look, because it's war, there's a big difference. If a person says, I see my husband, he died in his bed, we believe her. But it's war, war is chaos. She saw her husband fall down. What is she going to do? She's not going to sit there and look at him. She ran for her life. So, what about famine? She's there in the house. There's nothing to eat for two months already. They're eating grass and some leftover flour. What are they eating? She, she sees that her husband is on, on his last minute. That's it. He has one minute to live. She doesn't want to watch it. She runs. So, says Rava, in the beginning I thought, initially I thought, there's nothing forcing her to run. It's a famine, it's a terrible situation. She probably stayed there to his very last moment. She's his wife, she took care of him. Hold on, Rava, I have very good reason to change my mind. 
No, it's just like a war. Why? There was a story of Maisa Shahayu with Rav himself that made him change his mind. Amrlay, the woman told him, Bali Mesbarov, my husband died from starvation. You did amazing. It's a good thing you ran before he actually died. What is Rava doing? He's fooling her. He set her up. He gave her something to think about. And she actually fell for the trap. She, Rava tells her, it's a good thing you didn't wait to watch him die. You don't, you don't look at something like that. You ran for your life. Good for you. So you think that the little flower that you left him is going to live? Of course he died. You're 100% right. So she tells him, Oh, wow, you're so smart, Rav. How do you chaf that? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I left him there. There was nothing to eat. I knew he was going to die anyway. And I'm happy that you agree with me that he's dead. So Rav realized that she made it up. It's like in a war. She's assuming. She thinks. I don't know if it's here in Eretz Yisrael. Let's pretend it didn't happen here in Eretz Yisrael because I know there's a lot of people, uh, you know, you guys, they want to get out of the army, but let's say in Europe, trying to get out of the army. So you go, you go there, you go down there. One of the tricks, I have, I have relatives that did it. You know, they, they go, they, they look for, for bugs. <laughs> and, uh, okay, he's nuts, you're out. The, one of the guys, what they do is they come in and the guy would start saying, no, so what's your name? Huh? <laughs> Ah, you don't hear. <laughs> so, but these guys are, you know, seasoned uh, vet- veterans. And he's, okay, so you don't hear, you don't hear. Fine, you can go. Okay, the guy gets up. Hey, get back here. You heard me? That, that much you heard. That you could go home? Okay. That's what Robert did here. Played a trick on her. You did the right thing, you left. Yeah, okay. Fine. First, his first thought was that famine is not like a war. Now he's saying it's even worse. When it's by the war, she's not believed. But if she said during wartime, she said, I witnessed him die peacefully in his bed at home, she's believed. But when it comes to famine, she must say, I actually buried him. Not enough to say he died in his bed. What if it's Mamish? I don't remember, like just a few days ago, it was the surfside yard side, right? Anniversary. And here the Gemara is talking about Mapoilis when a building falls down. And she has, she has good reason to believe he's gone. Now we know that people have survived in these kinds of situations for days, maybe even weeks. She was in Surfside, she ran for her life. It was a very scary situation, but she assumed that her husband died. She's assuming. If you have wild animals like snakes, again, she ran for her life, she's assuming he died. Dever, where? There's no looking. She came back to a different city. She, she's with him on vacation in an island somewhere. Crazy island. We have all these crazy snakes. All the cobras came out. Hundreds of them. They started biting. They started this. She saw her husband. She, she heard the screaming. She heard the yelling. She was able to jump and, and get out of there. And that's it. They never heard from him again. There's a plague. There's a Corolla going around. And yeah, you assume everybody's dead. Some say it's not. She's going to assume. No. There's a saying that people say, and this woman relies on the saying. There was seven years. There was a, there was a, uh, what is a moisna? A, um, a plague. Moisna is more like a rav, no? But people don't, a what? Famine. Yeah. It's a famine. But people don't die if they don't need to die. If they don't deserve to die, that if it's not your time to go, it's not your time to go. So Mimela, she's not lying. If she says, 
she comes with the assumption her husband is going to survive. If it's not his time to go, he's not going to go. So she say that he's that he died. That means she really knows. It. So you want to ask a question? If Ziki she invented this war. We never heard about this war. It's not a famous war. It's not a World War II. It's something that she she saw by herself. She was in some small country. There's a war going on. The does she have a migui? Why is she lying? She, she, she didn't have to tell us this a war. She could say, he died peacefully in his bed, and we would believe her. You see, when I, when I was a bacher, uh, I was only like 10, 10, 11 years old, I was learning in a high school called Rechova. And Rav Shach used to come once a year to give a fair in the Zishiva. So the Bacham used to prepare for two, three weeks before he came. It was a whole thing. I actually have a picture of his cool thing. So one of the things that Roshiva asked us was this question. If the halacha is, if somebody is bari, he says, I know for certain this and this has happened. And the other guy says, I'm not certain. So who's believed? The guy that says that he's positive. The guy that says he doesn't know, so we don't believe him. So the, the famous question is, why doesn't the guy that says that he doesn't know, why don't we believe him? He could have said he knows. Every guy that says, I don't know 100%, he could have lied and said, I know 100%. So why don't we believe him? He should have a migui. So what's the answer? The answer is we do believe him. We believe him that he doesn't know. He, he says, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so we believe you, you're not sure. And this guy is sure, so we believe him. Over here also. We believe her. We believe her that she's in a situation of assumption. We do believe her. But nevertheless, it's not a positive thing. She thought that in this and this case, the building fell on him, there's a war, he died, but she wasn't there. So we believe her that there was a terrible situation, but we don't believe her that he's 100% dead. Says the Gemara, Toshma. Ishinu aleinu bayis. They burnt our house down. It's full of smoke. We had to escape. We had to jump out of the windows. Yishin Oleinu Ma'ara, we were in a cave and they smoked us out. Who made Svanini Tzalti? I survived. Eina Ne'amenes, she's not believed. So, over here, she created a Mulchama. She created a situation. We didn't know there was a fire. So it's similar to the, the Gemara's question. If she creates a, a, a war that we don't know about, a small war over here also. It's a small war. She, her house is in, is in a, it's like a war zone. She's not believed. Ah, she has a migui. She could have said, oh, my husband died peacefully in his bed. No, she's not believed. Why should I believe you? What are you saying? That there was a great fire and it consumed the entire house and I didn't hear from him. But hey, you survived. How did you survive? So however you survived, he also survived. Tashma, Again, it's like a war. They attacked us. The bad guys attacked us. So over here, he died. I survived. Now it's the reverse. She is believed. So you see in a small war, she's believed. She has a migui. Says Gemara also, the Ravidi. Ravidi says, What does that mean? That if there's a situation, she's, let's say, I saw in the Rishayim to explain this a little better. Because Rashi says that a woman is not going to run away. She's not fearful of, of her life. Most, worst comes to worst, they're going to violate her. Okay. What does that mean? Worst comes, it's a terrible thing. Yeah, but she's there with her husband. She's with her husband. And she doesn't want to leave him. He's in terror. They're killing him. But for her own life, she's not fearful. Because typically speaking, women are not killed in war. The enemy lets them survive, lets them go. Now, yes, they might do terrible things to them, but they won't kill them. And therefore, she's not running. And if she's not running, it's different than a typical war. It's not like there's, there's a gun battle that she has to leave. Over here, she doesn't have to run for her life. And therefore, she's believed to say, I saw with my own eyes that he died. Says the Gemara, oh, terrible, tra terrible, terrible tragedy. Mm -hmm. Gavra, true story. The Bishili Lule, right at the end of Shemar Brachas, it lay Nurev Begnone. The whole house where he's at, the Chassan house, what is it called today? They have these little houses for Chassan and Kalas. 
went up on fire. Armelu de Visu. So the Kala starts screaming, Chazug Avroi, look at my Chaser, Chazug Avroi. Wow, it's just one of the saddest things. When you hear these stories, when we just had an Eretz Yisrael, the Chaser that was on the table, he's jumping, and then he fell off the table and hit his head on the floor, and he's in a coma for who knows how long. And they said that he's out of it now, but he's like between life and death for months, right? Terrible. Honest Chaser, I had the Chaser. But she's screaming, look at my husband, look at my husband. Also, and people came running, they see a charcoal shape that looks like a human being, and a hand. Now, different Rishonim learn differently. Some learn in Rashi that it's his hand, maybe it's somebody else's hand, but it makes a difference because, by the way, I said the story, but it fits right in over here. I have a property I still own in Indianapolis called Abney Lake. And uh, one day we get a call that one of the apartments went on fire. We have a lot of these calls and I have a lot of stories with that. Crazy stories. That actually one of the stories, I ran out of the business. I stopped doing management because of that story. I couldn't take it anymore. A little kid and uh, the father did it on purpose. A whole mice. But anyway, this is a different story. The, the apartment burnt down. And before we know it, for some reason, the FBI shows up. Now when the FBI shows up, there's something going on. We didn't know it was flying. They said, we think that the guy that died is in the property. So they turned over the whole property, got some mice, it took a very long time. And they didn't let us go into the apartment. And then we have these lakes. It's like a bunch of lakes. If you look online, every lake, you'll see from the ear. Like these uh, fountains in the middle. Then they decided they have to drain the lake. And at first they sent scuba divers and drained the lake. And they were going crazy. The FBI, they didn't let, let us go for a while. And then finally they said, okay, fine, you go into the apartment. So we started going, I wasn't there, Baruch Hashem. They, they brought people through the apartment to see how much it costs to renovate and this and that. They go and coming. Then one day they show up and they decided they're going to search again. And you know where they found them? In the apartment. The same apartment that my manager and all these other people were walking through back and forth. They just stepped on him because he was ashes. Literally ashes. They didn't realize that he was in the apartment. So... Over here you have a similar thing. You have Gavra Charoicha Deshadi. Person that's just charcoal. Now, obviously you can't tell who it is. Is it the chasen, not the chasen? So what do you have? You have a, a, a kala that's screaming, my husband, my husband. Two minutes later, you find a charcoal body. So who is it? You could assume there's nobody else missing. Nobody, no posters went up. You can assume it's, it's her husband. And what about the hand? So the Gemara wants to say, oh, wait a minute. Maybe the husband survived. This body is somebody else's. Do you know? You don't know. Over there when they smoked him out of the cave, the house went on fire. She never screamed, my husband, my husband. You don't see a, a body? There's no, there's no evidence. There's no human remains. So why should I assume that it's her husband? But over here, she screamed, my husband. And then you find a body. Most likely, it's the husband. The door just locked. So I don't know if anybody wants to come in, but whatever. The automatic lock. That means that maybe the lights are going to go off in a minute. Huh? No. It could be somebody that came to save them. You know, when I was a... Uh, a kid in Bnei Brak, a terrible story. Again, we're talking about terrible stories. There was a, a bus that caught fire, or maybe it was a terrorist attack. I don't remember anymore. And a woman jumped out of the bus, and then she realized she left one of her children on the bus. And they told her, don't go back on the bus. She said, I can't. My child's there. So she ran back on the bus to get her child, and she died in the fire. She was already saved. So it's possible someone that's coming to save the person, he's the person that died. I apologize for all these uh, gruesome stories. Maybe here the Gemara says, maybe somebody else came along and tried to save him. He, he's the one that died. And what's going on here with the hand? The hand, maybe the hand is the Chassan's hand. So where's the Chassan? The dead guy is the rescuer. The hand is the chasen. 
you know, he's a chassan, he feels terrible. Now he's a balmum, he doesn't have an arm. He was too embarrassed to, to show up and tell his kala, my arm is gone. And he left. Okay, so different shayim learn differently. The, the rush learns that it's impossible for an arm to get burnt off and a person not dying. That's one and the same and different shayim here. Okay. Ibailu. Now, we said that a woman is not believed at war, in wartime, that her husband died. What about Eid Echo ben Muhammad? Not the woman. A man. He's a, he's a single witness. Typically, he's believed to say that so and so died. Now it's a war. Does, does the war ruin his name on us? The reason why we always trust a single aid is because he's scared that they're going to find out that he's a liar. In this case, also, he's not going to lie. We had this Sugi Rabbi Isai. It's a combination of two things. Yes, he's scared that he's going to be found out that he's a liar, but also we have to rely on the, on the woman. She doesn't want to be over. She's going to do her homework. And Mela, that's what we rely on, on the woman. In this case, she, she's not going to care. Why? Because it's a war. She's going to assume that he's dead. So Taisa says that it was a time when the Goyim didn't allow Klai Yisrael to be Ma'abra the year, to do a, a Iber Yart of a, a, extra month. So they used to take the Gadladar only, like the, he brings Rameir was the Gadladar, he did it once. Rebbe Kiva, there's nobody greater than Rebbe Kiva. So Rebbe Kiva went to Chutzlars to look at and decide when the extra month should be. So this Gadol, whoever he was, he told Rabbi Kiva, I heard that you don't, you don't trust a single aid. The only one that holds you could rely on aid Echad is Rabbi Yudu ben Baba. And I said, yes, you're right. So then he continues to say, Tell Rebbe Kiva, go back to Eretz Yisrael and tell everybody. It sounds like, literally, I should have those Yerushalmi's come here. Okay. They're right next door. Terrible Medina. No, Medina Azu Mishubeshes Begayosis. The country we live in. Bavel. It's too dangerous. What is he saying? The Gemara wants to be medayi from those words. Here, if you forgot who Gamliel Azokin is, it's a whole Hill Azokin, Rib Shimon, Gamliel Azokin, Rib Shimon Gamliel, Rib Gamliel. It's very confusing. Rib Shimon Gamliel finally reviewed that Nasi Rebbe, but it's all Ben Achar Ben Achar Ben Gamliel Azokin. I heard it from Gamliel Azokin. You could marry off a woman based on one name. Says the Gemara, but let's be medayik. My medinim shubesh b'gayasis. What what was he trying to say when he said, "Oh, this place, Bavel, is full of soldiers and this war and it's terrible. It's very dangerous." Lav avagavdi medinim zum shubeshes. Kachem gilayin shemisin al piyadechad. L'chayra, this is our case. You have a war. It's a medina shubeshes b'gayasis. It's a war time, and and we're gonna tr- we're gonna trust the edechad. You see, you can trust the edechad during war. Says Gemara, Omer Rava. I don't like your pshat. It's not pshat. Why is he saying our country? Bavel. He should have just said a statement. Any, if there's a war, you can trust the Yedechad. Why our country? Something completely different. All he's trying to say is, listen, I would do it myself. I would come and say over the testimony. I can't. I can't get there. It's very dangerous. You're going anyway. Please do me a favor. And say it over in Gamaliel's name. I can't leave everybody to go testify. This is what I got from Gamaliel. You, Rabbi Kiva, take care of it. Tell everybody else. Toshma. Maisa, another terrible story. There's two Tamidi Chachamim that were on a boat. Vitava. And it went down. Very interesting raya. We have two people that drowned. And we have women that testified that they drowned. Water. When you see 
somebody drowned, you assume that they're dead. It's bididami. It's an assumption. You don't see a body. It's you say, hey, it's impossible you lived. How could it be? People don't live on the water for hours. And I'm looking here and I don't see anybody. Nobody surfaced. So it's an interesting Uriah. Women are equal to one aid. Hundred women like one. So we have Eid Echadir that testified that they drowned. And it's a war. So you see that during a war, it's unbelievable, right? You see, during a war, one aid is enough. Vikutani, Haisi. He married people off. The, 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 their wives were able to get married based on the testimony. Says the Gemara, At the end of the day, if you can't see the edge of the water, it's not a pool, you can't see the edge. Perhaps the guy surfaced two miles out over there. How? I have a way. You're asking, how's it possible? No. How's it possible? It's possible. Check this out. I have a chart. Not this one. This guy right over here was swallowed by a humpback whale. And uh, he, he had scuba diving gear on. And he didn't die. The, he made it. He, he thought that's it. His life is over. It was dark, everything. And then this humpback spit him out. Mice and you look it up. Diver swallowed by humpback whale. So it's probably the other guy, the humpback whale took him out three miles and spit him out over there. I don't know how it happened. He grabbed onto a tuna and he went for a ride. Something happened. I said this before and look it up. I have to look it up again. I haven't seen it in years. But there's a phenomena that if a person drowns and it's in cold water, he could survive for even hours underwater. Check it out. There's such a thing. It's happened. Because something, something with the, the, the brain shuts down, everything shuts down, but the, the body gives a little bit of oxygen to the brain just to survive, and then they come out. There's such a, I forgot what it's called. A, um, the, the doctor's not in the house, but whatever. Check it out. I think it's real. I'll go upon it. What? It's, it's basically, usually with children. If you don't know for sure, you didn't see the body, so how are you testifying that he's dead? Then even two, look, if two Adam said they saw a guy go in and, and they didn't see him come out, we don't trust them. Two Adam, forget one Adam, two Adam. It doesn't mean he's dead. Maybe he came out somewhere else. So what, what was the story over there? Dami askinu kamon. They brought the body up. Vichazinu la altar. Kuftesvavam in the base. And we saw the bodies immediately. Why immediately? So Rashi ties this over here. Because what happens is, when people drown, they become disfigured. They bloat up and, and the water, and then either they shrivel, they shrink. You, you can't really say, oh, yeah, I recognize that face. But if it's right away, right as they pull the body out, then we believe them. Oh. There are identifying simonim, not tattoos. Tattoo would be a good one, but we're talking about from people. Birthmarks, Birthmarks scars, different simonim that only this and this person has it. The lav, alayu samchinun, ela simonim. If they're able to say, we, we saw on this time of Chacham, he has a massive scar on his back. Okay? Nobody in the world can know that. So if they're saying they, they saw a scar like that, then we know it's that Tamil Khan. We're not, we're not relying on the woman as much as we're relying on the sim. Sponsored by Moshe Horn, in honor of Rabbi Tzvi Medetsky, the only Rebbe that was actually good at basketball. <laughs> so when I saw this, I was either I'm not a Rebbe, or he's just never seen me play basketball. Okay. Sponsored by Nisan. Lads Locha Ruchni and Gashmi from Arad Nakash for introducing me to MDY. Oh, Gavra. Maisa Not a sad one. This is, it's slightly sad, but not terribly sad. Oh, Gavra. So there's a guy that said, Look, do me a favor, take my sesame seeds. I need you to watch my sesame seeds. Oh, my leg. Havli Shumshimi. Then he comes back. Reuven, Reuven gives the sesame seeds to Shimon. Reuven comes back to Shimon. Okay, time to give it back to me. Amalei Shkiltinu. What, you don't remember? I paid you back. I gave them back to you. So Reuven says, wait a minute. 
Yeah? If I paid it back, how do I know that in your house, in the garage, there's three and a half barrels and they weigh 173 pounds? Go check it out. He goes, he checks out, there's three and a half barrels, 173 pounds. Oh, it's an unbelievable simon. How, how did Ruve know? Obviously, it's his stuff. He's the one that gave it. He gave his simon, it's his. I put it in a barrel. Omalei, he doesn't back down. He's not, he's not impressed. Didach shkaltinu. You took your three and a half barrels, your 173 pounds. I happened to buy a certain amount. And you want to say, okay, you waited, great, it weighs the same. It's a coincidence. It's not a riot that it's yours. Here, it's the same concept as the Talmud Chachamim that the women are believed with the simon. Oh, just so happened to be that there's another guy that had a massive scar. Uh, it looks like a big X on his back. And then another guy with the same X came up. No, we don't say that. But one simon is good enough. Over there, they actually gave simonim that are one of a kind. All sesame seeds look the same. And he said the, the amount and the, the weight. He just got lucky. Yeah, there's a guy. Uh, Rebianko, Rebianko Galinsky says this. I said this over also. It's, we're going back to the beginning. You, but you didn't hear it. For you it's good. A guy won the lottery. So they asked him, how do you win the lottery? <laughs> He said, uh, well, I had, an, uh, had a dream. 139, and then 734, and then 816. I did the math. 1642, this, I did the math, and it came out those numbers, and that's what I put in. So he said, what was he dreaming again? 135, 7, that? It's not the number, though. He goes, wow, what a nest that I learned in Panovich. <laughs> so, oh! He just so happened to get the cheshmer right. He, he doesn't know math. He didn't know He got it right by mistake. So I, I get, you guessed that it was 173 pounds. Okay, you got it. You're lucky. Doesn't mean that it's your sesame seeds. So Mark Shisha, Shisha means old. But we once learned, I forgot where, that Mark Shisha actually means his youngest son, it's Ben Skunim. Like we say, you know, how do you say it in English? The, uh, they do that broom dance for the, uh, the Mzinke. The the Ma- Mark Shisha means his, his youngest son, not the oldest. Because he was old. Bar Rav Chizda or Rav Ashi. The, the son of Rav Chizda, when Rav Chizda was old, his youngest son of Rav Ashi. Are we concerned? That the guy actually removed all the sesame seeds. But not mostly because of a love kuf. If a guy finds some sort of pot, he finds a barrel and there's a big kuf on it. What does that mean? What does it mean? Does it mean it uh, belongs to Kalman? What does it mean? Oh, we're going to assume that it's a carbon, that it has gdusha. It belongs to the Vesam Mikdash. So why does it say carbon on it? It should say carbon. Well, I have a very good reason why it doesn't say carbon and only kuf. Mem stands for Meiser, Meiser Shani. Dalit, Dimua. Domai, I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's Truma, Meiser, I don't know. It's a Safa. Tes, Tevel. This is the rice. You eat it, this is 100%. Nobody took Truma some Meiser from it. If you find on the barrel, it says tough, Truma. Why? Shibishas Sakana, when the non Jews, when the, the guy were in charge, they didn't let us write carbon. You wrote carbon, they'll take your head off. So you write kuf. They would write kuf. They would write tough. All the letters, not just tough, like the Gemara says. Shalos got a guy in tough. That's true. Rashi says it applies to the mem also. Every day. Over there, Rabbi Leravash. Like Hashinon, Shemupinon, Nei Masefa. What about it? Says then, Rabbi Yosi, Oy Merafi, No Matzah Chavis, because of all that truma. Harei Luchulim. Even if you find something that says a tough. It's not, it's not truma. Why? Shani Oyem and Shtokad have a Mali truma opinion. Well, just because the guy put truma in it yesterday, 20 years later, it's still going to be truma. A pot is made to take things in and out. And there's no raya that just because it says tough on it, it's truma. And it seems like nobody argues on that. 
No, you're right. We have to be concerned that maybe somebody removed the 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 fruit, whatever it is, of that barrel. You should erase it. Why are you not erasing the kuf? No, he forgot to erase. Yeah, you're asking Akash. How come he didn't erase the kuf? Well, a lot of people are busy. He's, he's taking out sesame seeds. He's taking out whatever it is, the truma. He forgot to erase the kuf. So just because it says kuf doesn't mean it's a carbon. Inami, this is beautiful. Inami, the fanchiyo shafkei. He left the kuf on on purpose. It's not from the base of English. It's not truma. You know why a guy leaves a tough on it? He doesn't want you to take it. If he puts truma, tough on it, he's not going to take it. Like the famous mice in yeshiva. <laughs> exactly. Everybody knows the mice, but just in case you don't, there's a guy that every single day somebody would steal his milk. Every day, he'd use it for the cereal. So the guy wrote on it, Osir, the Gneva, Mamish, Isidaraisa. Next day, same amount is missing. You know what to do. Finally, I had a brainstorm. Mamish, unbelievable idea. He wrote on it, Cholov Stam. Then nobody touched it. There's another guy in my yeshiva, <laughs> this guy. Everybody used to steal his chocolate. So he put diuretics in there. <laughs> it looked like chocolate. <laughs> the couple of guys in yeshiva didn't come out of the Beis Akise for three days. Okay. So, Zeh says the Gemara. Listen to this name. Unbelievable name. Yitzchak Reish Gulusa. There was a guy by the name of Yitzchak Reish Gulusa. Typically, the Reish Golos is like the Galador, but it doesn't seem like he's the Galador over here. It seems like that was his nickname. Like, we all know in the neighborhood, this guy, his name is Yirmi Gold. So, when he goes to the, to the airport, once in a while, it happened to him twice already, they think he's a gold status. Because his name is Gold, so they give, him, they give him like free business class tickets, stuff. He's like, he doesn't say anything. He's like, oh, Gold. Okay, yeah, you go. Fine, go. You go first, second. His name is Reish Galusa. His mother, Chat, this guy is a low youth. I'm just saying, I don't know. Maybe he's a Golad Dar. I don't want to say anything about him. But there's no Raya because it seems like from the Gemara that somebody else also had that name. He's not the head of the Golas. He is like Reish Galusa. The guy in Chaim uh, Berlin I saw years ago. He, it's, his name was some Ish Yerushalayim. Like you can make you can make your own name, whatever you want. His name is Reish Galusa. Barach said the Rav Bivi, he was the son of the sister of Rav Bivi. Now this, this is interesting. It's a one of a kind name. Again, Yitzchak Reish Galus, Barach say the son of the sister of Bivi. No, what are the chances that somebody else has such a name? He went from Kortavia to Aspamia and he died. So they, they sent back Yitzchak Grish Guluso, Barachosid, the Rav Bivi, Havakozom, and Kortavia to Aspamia So they sent back, okay, this is a freebie. Said this whole long name, he's dead. So the question is, Do we have to be concerned for two Yitzchaks or not? I have this picture over here. I just thought it was uh, fascinating. This is when they started using. Because of this picture, they started using fingerprints. Emma's a picture. If you look closely, you're not going to believe your eyes. These, this person is actually two different people, not related. And their name is, one of them is Will West, and the other one is William West. And they're not related. I don't know how it's shy, not related. But it's possible. Maybe they thought they're not related, but they were very related. Who knows? And they wear the same clothes. No, but Emma's. I, I, I saw somewhere, I don't know, I tried to find it today, that a guy got hit by a, a, a taxi driver at a corner. He got hit, on, he was on a moped, and a taxi came and killed him. A year later, the same taxi killed his brother on a moped on the same corner. Okay, fine, look it up. But anyway, talking about this is like one of the most gruesome shiurim shayach. <laughs> I'm about to go to America. I don't know what's coming out. All sorts of things. Fine. This, because of this, we can't trust people. Says the Gemara, So, Do we have to be concerned? Will West, William West, same clothes, same face, same everything. 
Great. Same haircut even. Look at this. I don't know. It's, he's right. But look, his shirt collar is slightly off on, on the thing. Okay. How do I know that I have to be concerned that maybe somebody has the same weird name, Reish Galusa? He's not even Reish Galusa, he has the same name. Now, get the Shtak there was a get that was found, Uchsiv Betzad Klonya Masa, in the city called Klonya. I know Andrew Lini, Narda, Andrew Linoi, fine, I'll read it the right way. I just thought it's Andrew Lini. That sounds, sounds like an Italian guy. That's Buckley Shoes. Huh? That's Buckley Shoes. There's such a name? Andrelini? Okay. <laughs> Andrelini and I do. Ptiris, with the rachis, his plain is in the sea. I divorce my wife. Goodbye. The Shochab with Shmuel. By the way, remember this name. The father of Shmuel. We're going to have a Gishmak Amais about him. Avua the Shmuel. Tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow's daf. The father of Shmuel. How was Shmuel conceived? That's tomorrow. But remember his name here. Avu the Shmuel. This is according to the Ben Yayad of Tomer. It's going to be a Gishmak Ben Yayad. One of, the, one of a kind. Likamei the Rebbe Yehuda Nesiyah. So Avu the Shmuel sent to Rebbe Yehuda Anasim. So Rebbe Yehuda said, Rebbe said, you know, let, we have to check the whole city. What if, the, what if there's another funny name? The, what's the name? Andrelini. Andrelini and Erda. Come on. We said you have to check the whole city. So you see, if you're checking Andrelini, you're also going to check Yitzchak, Reish, Galusa, Bar, Chasei, the Rebbe. Someone had to go to the whole Arichas, because the whole Arichas is like, doesn't make sense. He's also going to be the son of the sister of Rav Bibi. Okay, someone take that part out. But I'll go upon him. Rav Omar, Imisel, if it's true, what, what Rebbe is saying, they have to check Naherda, Yibadakaloy, Mibayol. Maybe he took a, a ride, he took a bus somewhere else. So now you have to check the whole world. He didn't want to embarrass the father of Shmuel, say, oh, you asked a, a silly question. Huh. You have the choshish for 200 linies. Now, of course not. There's only one in Shalma Yisrael. How do I know that you're not choshish for two people with the same funny name? Now, just like today in Williamsburg, I think it used to be like that, the name Yoel is like, you say Yoel, three quarters of the class raise their hand, right? Menachem Mendel and Nachman and Uman and Menachem Mendel in Crown Heights, etc. I think there's more Yoels than I don't know. Fine. Because he he's nifted way before. I'll go upon him. In Mechayza, the name, the name was Chave, and also Nanoi. So now you have two stars. One says Chavi Bar Nani, and the other says Nani Bar Chavi. Vagbabu. Now, the guy's name is Chavi. The other guy's name is Nani. Fine. But why should I trust the star? There's a thousand of them. I go in Williamsburg and I say, Oh, yo, yo, you owe me money. Here. Uh, and the Bezin say, Yeah, you owe me money. What do you mean? There's a thousand. Who says you're Yoel? It says in the star, I'm Yoel. Yoel Friedman. Yoel Cohen. Hey, there's a, a million of them. Open up the phone book, right? I don't know what, what's the popular Sephardi name here. Cohen. Shlomo Cohen. Shlomo Cohen. It says here that, that Benny owes Shlomo Cohen money. But there's a thousand Shlomo Cohens. Make this, it's me. Says the Gemara. There's so many of them. So says Abaya, and this is we're going to finish here. Says Abaya, no. Think about it. Yes. I'm Yoel Friedman, and I'm coming and asking you for money. What's the problem? Elin and Philo, what are you worried about? That somebody else found my star? No, I don't have to be worried about that. Mizar Zarebe, you wrote me a star. I held on to it. It's a lot of money. It's very valuable. I don't, I don't just drop it in the street. Elipi Kaldan. Now, if I'm concerned that somebody else with the same name as me gave me the star to watch it, I don't have to be concerned for that either. The guy is not an idiot. He's not going to give another Yoel Friedman a star that says Yoel Friedman because he knows that the second Yoel Friedman is going to use it. You, use, you give it to somebody that doesn't have your name. You give it to Stefanski. Or you don't give it to a Friedman. If your name is Friedman, you don't, give it, you don't look in the phone book. Oh, who has the same exact name as me? And let me give it to him to watch my star. That makes no sense. So what's the final concern? My amras, Dilma Maybe he sold it to me, just gave it to me. He said, here, 
you know, I owe you money. I said, Here, take it. The thing is, Isis Nicholas bin Masira. That's also not a concern. Because if that's what happened, if I gave somebody else a star, he deserves the star because that's how you give somebody a star. That's how you sell a star. Just give it to it. Just by, by giving him the star. So therefore, says Abayah, I don't have to worry. So there's a thousand nanois in Mechayza. There's a, a hundred thousand uh, chavis, whatever they call it, chavis. It doesn't matter. If I produce the star, you owe me the money because nobody else has my star but me. Have a wonderful day. Be'ez Hashem, I'll see you live in 13 days. Look at the, uh, if you're in America, I'm going to be in Baltimore, in Lakewood. I'm going to be in five towns, but I'm not giving a sheer in five towns. Just like in a room somewhere, in a basement. Uh, Deal, New Jersey, and Toronto, Be'ez Hashem. Be there or be square. Have a wonderful day.